In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Venn diagrams to organize data and make it easier to calculate probabilities. So in this example, we've got a school year of 60 students and 32 of those students are studying geography. So that's my first category. And I've also got biology. So I'm going to label that with B. So I've got G and B. Um, I'm told that 32 study geography and 40 study biology and 18 study both. OK, so automatically I know um, a very important part of this Venn diagram, which is the number that's going in the middle in the intersection, and that's 18, okay? Um, and remember that the whole circle represents geography. So if 32 study geography, I've already got 18 accounted for in here. Um, I'm gonna need to put in, what, uh, 14 in here to make up to 32. And over this side, um, I've already got 18 that do study some biology, also do geography. Um, I've got 40 in total that study biology, so an extra, what would it be, 22 study just biology. Okay, so that's what that 22 represents. They study just biology, not in the intersection. They don't do geography as well. Okay, now altogether, if I add these up, I get a total of 54. And I know that I've got 60 students altogether. So I must have some students in this school year who don't do either geography or biology. So I've got 54 uh, here and therefore I must have six outside who do neither subject. Okay, and actually that's the question that I'm then asked. Um, if 18 to be both, find the probability of a randomly selected student studying neither um, geography nor biology. Okay, so the probability of not being in that union, okay, so the complement of the union of G and B, or if you just want it in words, uh, neither G or B, it's basically what that means if that's confusing, is going to be 6 out of 60, or 1 in 10, or we could have 10%, okay, or we could have 0 0.1. doesn't matter if you write it as a fraction, decimal, or percentage. Okay, so fantastic, that's the first example. Um, okay, so another example, a little bit more to this one, okay, but it's the same sort of premise. Uh, we've got two subjects, again, so I'm going to organise the data in a Venn diagram, this time looking at physics and chemistry. Uh, we're told again that 15 study both of the subjects and 15 in here in the middle. Um, and I know that 19 in total study physics. So we've got an extra four that just do physics, not chemistry. So 19 in total do physics. Um, 17 do chemistry, so an extra two in here. Altogether, that adds up to 21. I've got 30 here, so that would mean nine that don't do either physics or chemistry. Okay, so now I've got all my sections labelled up with how many num the number of people who do uh, each of those things. Uh, I can now do part B. Hence, I'm going to use the above. Determine the probability that a randomly selected student from this class studies both subjects. Okay, so that's going to be what, 15 out of a total of 30, uh, which I know is one half. So there's a 50% chance that you do both subjects. Okay, number two, at least one of the subjects. Now, at least one means at the very least one. So you could do one or two subjects. So I guess it's everything within the union of the physics and chemistry bubbles. So, um, so that would be, what, 21 over 30. Can I simplify that? Yes, I can. They're both um, multiples of seven, so three tenths. Okay, third one. Um, physics but not chemistry. Okay, so we've got physics people. These people also do chemistry. There's four people who just do physics, no chemistry out of 30. Um, so that would be 2 fifteenths if we simplify that down. Two's prime, so we can't go any further with that simplification. And then exactly one of the subjects. Okay, so we've got these four people who just do physics. I've got these two people that just do chemistry. So there's six there altogether out of 30, uh, one fifth. And finally, um, neither subject. Okay, well, you can see that these nine people are not into physics or chemistry. So, um, three tenths, there we go. Okay, so, you know, it's it's just a really effective way. I don't think it would be very easy at all to answer this question without this, um, without this tool. Okay, so by constructing the Venn diagram, you make life a lot easier for yourself. Okay, now this question uh, just moves it on slightly. Um, you could be asked this sort of style of question, uh, you need to know what to do in this instance. We can use a bit of algebra actually. So 
In a class of 26 students, it's found that 10 study geography, 16 study history, and four study neither. Okay, so I'm gonna put that whatever information I can in. I know that four is gonna go outside. I know that generally there's gonna be 10 people who do geography and 16 who do history, but I don't actually know how many, what numbers to put in each of these. Because remember, there will be, there's gonna be some students who do both subjects. Um, so the first part is calculate the number of students who study both history and geography. Now, how on earth am I gonna know which number to put in here? The answer to this is that I'm gonna use some algebra. I don't know exactly, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sort of model it using X, okay? This is my unknown, this is what I'm trying to find. I'm gonna solve for X. Now, if I know that in this circle here for geography in the Ben, um, the 10, st 10 students study geography, I've already got X accounted for here. What would be an expression that would go in here to um, make the whole thing add up to 10? Well, I've already got X. This would have to be 10 subtract X. Whatever this would be, say it was three, this would be 10 minus three, this would be seven. It would, it would add up to 10. Yeah. Same thing goes over here. So I've got 16 students that study history. Um, so the expression that's gonna go in here would have to be 16 minus X. Yeah, okay. And then, so it says now calculate the number of students who study both history and geography. I know that four of these 26 students don't do either. So it must be the case that these expressions must add up to 26 minus four, right? It's got, they've got to be, it's got to be, if there's four people here, there must be 22 people here. So I can start to write this down as an equation, 10 minus X plus X, plus 16 minus x, sorry about the presentation here, equals 22, okay? I'm gonna be a bit fancy here, I can say, well, a bit clever, I've got minus x and x, they can cancel. Um, and so I can go back to my equation and simplify it. 10 plus, 10 plus 16 is 26. 26 minus x therefore equals 22. That means that x must be equal to four. Done, okay, so from there, I've done it. This is four. That means that 10 minus four, this was must be six, and 16 minus four, this must be 12. Okay. 12, okay, so then, what's it asking us to do? Yeah, we, okay, we've done it. So part A, we've done it, X equals four, that's the number of students who study both history and geography. Part B, hence, again, that word hence, use the information, find the probability that a student selected at random from this class so it is exactly one of these subjects. Okay, well, I've, I've made progress with that already because I've put in, I've substituted x equals four into these and found the value. So the number of people who just do geography is six. The number of people who just do history is 12. Six plus 12, what's that? 18 out of 26. And I guess they're both even numbers, I can simplify that a little bit. So it's nine thirteenths. There's a nine in 13 chance that a student selected at random from this class studies exactly one of these subjects. Okay, so it's quite a common question. Final question, I just want to touch on this a little bit. Um, this is <clears throat> what we call conditional probability and sometimes questions, the way they're worded can lead you to this sort of um, approach. So the Venn diagram shows the number of students in a class who study Italian and French. A student is randomly selected from the class and it's found that they study French. So already we've got that sort of, you know, condition that they, they study French. Okay, they study French. Given that first bit of information, they study French, determine the probability that the student also studies Italian. Okay, so what we've got to think about here is the probability of, you know, studying Italian, given that, um, study French. Should I say study Italian? Study Italian given that, study French. Okay, so how many people study French? Seven plus eight, I think it's 15 there. And of those 15 people, how many people also do Italian? There they are, eight, okay? So hopefully, you know, if you read that question very carefully, you can, you can arrive at that answer as well. Okay, so that's a little bit of a crash course in probability using Venn diagrams. Really, really useful tools for simplifying um, questions and making them very visual.